Now this can be a bit controversial and maybe a couple of people might bash out me in the comment section but I believe I would recommend everybody to take a pause if they are exploring too much things around Next.js but the problem is that if you actually work on large scale projects what I believe is we should take a pause and let Next.js settle on something currently in the industry also if you will see you will not find a lot of big tech companies actually working end to end on Next.js I, I believe obsolete JavaScript libraries that I don't think you should spend a lot of time I'm not saying these frameworks are dying there are still a lot of companies that actually use this definitely more than the number of companies who are using next years okay but I believe that there have been some really good alternatives that have actually come out in the market there are a lot of things that happens magically and maybe you don't want them to happen in that case you have to make a lot of changes right and apart from that if you see the job market as of now the job market is very heavily focusing on things like <laughs> those who are my top three picks right there can be of course a lot of more things a lot of people are going to actually tell you that what are some of the very interesting things that you should go forward and learn in 2025 right i thought let's take a different opinion on this and let's start talking about probably what are the some what are some things that i'm not that bullish and i might not recommend a lot of people to go forward and like give their full on full power 100% effort in learning these things these are specifically my opinion right i maybe you might differ with this and it's absolutely okay right it's absolutely okay if you have a different opinion on this but i will try to point out two to three things that i feel if you are giving a lot of effort maybe you should stop until or unless you have a very specific reason to that see what happens is sometimes whenever you are working with a particular company you are stuck with the particular tech stack that that particular company is using maybe that tech stack is not that relevant outside in the industry but the company that you are working with it's very important for them so you don't have much of a choice but in case let's say you are in college or let's say you are looking for your next stint and you want to figure out what are some of the key technology uh, that you should keep under your belt or you should start learning then i would say try to avoid these that i'm going to talk about and again if you don't want it's all up to you it's going to be your own sole decision as well so without any further ado let's just start so before moving forward in the video i have an important announcement for you so if you're somebody who is actually willing to learn advanced backend technologies, then this is going to be the right platform for you. So at AlgoCamp, we have launched our new flagship Lambda 4.0 Advanced Live Backend Development Batch in which you are going to learn advanced backend technologies including Fastify, ExpressJS, AWS, Mongo, DynamoDB and whatnot. This is going to be a power packed course in which we are going to take you from the very scratch, very basics of backend technologies to the very advanced level by building a lot of interesting projects. We are going to build projects like Code Sandbox Clone, we are going to build streaming app which, which will include recorded movie streaming plus live streaming as well. We are going to make applications like Booking.com backend which is going to help you understand transactional capabilities, integrations of payment gateways and many more. All the important projects that we are going to cover in the course is going to be listed here and this is going to be an absolute live course where we are going to take live classes right and in these live classes we are going to do hands-on coding experience to learn all the important advanced backend technologies you already know that backend is something that every important application needs and you can actually excel your software engineering career with these backend tech in the node.js stack so what are you waiting for all the important links the complete syllabus curriculum all the details of the course is present in the description section below you can use the coupon code coming up here to get maximum discount off on the current price i'm really excited for the course i hope you guys are too and now let's get back to the video now this can be a bit controversial and maybe a couple of people might bash out me in the comment section but i believe I would recommend everybody to take a pause if they are exploring too much things around Next.js. Why? See, I believe Next.js has a very similar problem that one more JavaScript framework used to have and still has, which is Angular. The problem that I feel with Next.js is that they are actually evolving Next.js too fast, too frequently, right? If you see the past three odd years or four odd years, Next.js has developed itself at a very fast pace trust me it's a good thing but the problem is that if you actually work on large scale projects you don't want syntactically and functionally your frameworks and libraries to change very fast i'll give you a small example 
small things like imports in next years has changed very drastically in next 15 right the use router hook used to come from next router earlier now it comes from next navigation okay very simple thing i know but the problem is that if syntactically also the library is changing you can understand that internally also there are a lot of things that is very frequently changing in the library apart from this next js took a very different take on the routers as well right earlier it was the og page router and now they have shifted to app router to be very honest if you ask my opinion i really like app router and it makes it very it makes it very consistent with other let's say react frameworks which is let's say react native frameworks like expo and everything but still i feel that there, this was a similar problem that existed with angular right it was evolving very fast and every year if you start learning next years the things have absolutely end to end changed this overall uh, i would say hampers the overall community efforts as well right you will see that some articles are recommending something some articles are recommending something else and so on so what i believe is we should take a pause and let next year settle on something that they feel that obey is going to be the long term version and majority of the things are going to be working like this something that happens with react right if you see the very major change in the overall architecture and the coding styles and the coding effort in react changed when they introduced hooks and after that most of the coding styles coding scenarios coding practices have stayed consistent they keep on adding the features that's pretty good but they don't change the style of making the applications all together end to end right apart from that currently in the industry also if you will see you will not find a lot of big tech companies actually working end to end on next years there might be some teams but to be very honest if you ask me i have not seen let's say any one of my friends or any sister teams or my team to actually uh, work on next years yes early stage startups might be very excited with next years because it gives you a lot of ease but react the plain react is still something that a lot of teams and a lot of companies are still using so i would say if you want to give your full effort try to give it to the plain react right you should know how to do everything that next year just very magically do for you with plain react because there might be a case that people are going to stuck with react altogether and if let's say in a year or so next js becomes kind of like more stable and stays consistent with their overall library efforts then maybe this is something that you can give a word shot to now there are a lot of i will i believe obsolete javascript libraries that i don't think you should spend a lot of time learning i'll give you an example so when i was doing google summer of code my google summer of Pro code project was in meteor js trust me after that i have not seen any particular project or any wo uh, and worked on any project around meteor js and we know that there are millions of javascript library probably right so you don't have to work on all of these and some of the most notable ones are something like let's say meteor js backbone js right these are some of the javascript libraries that maybe if you are trying to explore now that might not be the best shot you can stick to something like react it's going to be good if you ask me an alternative option i would say go for vue js rest everything let's say ember backbone you can try to technically avoid even i would say try to avoid maybe angular also because again with the issues of angular and the overall adoption of angular if you have work with angular like let's say in your company angular is still used stick to that no problem but that like keep that as your third priority that if let's say you are very good with react and you still want to explore something maybe you can try to explore something like uh, i would say angular right and instead let's say if you instead of learning so many different different front end frameworks and libraries if you know react why not shift to something like react native and start exploring a new tech like that is mobile development altogether right that is going to be something that is going to be pretty cool so these are some of the things like these obsolete i would i would say javascript libraries that maybe you can try to technically avoid now i know i know that there has been a lot of instances when i was in absolute end to end uh, favor of rails right when i say rails i refer to ruby on rails the og web framework uh, powered by the ruby programming language and its corresponding counterpart with python that is python django i'm not saying these frameworks are dying there are still a lot of companies that actually use this definitely more than the number of companies who are using next js okay but i believe that there have been some really good alternatives that have actually come out in the market that replaces the use case for ruby on rails and python django if you see python also python has some really interesting frameworks and libraries nowadays including flask and fast api which can help you write extremely performant backend systems with very minimalistic effort with very minimalistic bloat that actually comes with rails and django right you can customize things you can use a plug and play architecture and what not right so i believe 
frameworks like rails frameworks like django are very heavy for a lot of use cases nowadays people are actually migrating from monolith to monorepos and microservices when you see a microservice architecture your overall agenda is to make sure that one service has a limited scope and is actually focusing on a limited functionality altogether then why do you want to use these heavy frameworks altogether because there are a lot of things that happens magically and maybe you don't want them to happen in that case you have to make a lot of changes right and apart from that if you see the job market as of now the job market is very heavily focusing on things like latest python uh, libraries like something like fast api or let's say node js based frameworks and libraries or java based frameworks and libraries if you are exploring something like express uh, if you are exploring something like spring boot i am a total 100 on 100 on that go ahead do check them out but if let's say if you are curious about let's say learning things around rails or maybe python django maybe take a step back until or unless you have an actual use case of learning them contributing to them and making projects out of them maybe take a step back and try to explore something like maybe spring boot or maybe express in node js or fastify in node js or maybe next uh, nest js there is a backend framework called as nest js in node js you can try to explore that so this is also one more technology that i would say that maybe you can try to avoid in 2025 and those who are my top 3 picks right there can be of course a lot of more things things like php and all which i always uh, try to say that okay maybe until unless you have use case don't learn them but maybe uh, these were some of the things that i used to uh, teach also uh, for example if you see next js a lot of cohorts of ours actually teach next js and i believe as a general knowledge stuff it's good to know but i'm not going to go head on like uh, i would not recommend anybody to like go head on and just go explore everything end to end in next uh, next js because again as i mentioned things are changing pretty fast so these are some of the things that i used to recommend but i believe now i would ask people to maybe take a chill pill take a pause and until or unless they need it then only explore all of them let me know in the comment section if there are some technologies that you find are going to be obsolete and nobody should uh, start learning them out of the box or like out of curiosity and start exploring something else do let me uh, do let me know your opinions and your options in the comment section below i would be technically happy to uh, read all of that that being said let's wrap this particular video here we are going to meet soon in the next set of videos where we are going to talk more about tech and career till then take care bye bye i am sanket singh signing off